Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's good to be in the Lord's house, and we thank you for being for tuning in. And, uh, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to have his way uh, in this service tonight. And it's sure, certainly good to be back in the sanctuary uh, of the house of the Lord tonight. And, uh, Amen. And this Sunday, this Sunday, coming this Sunday, uh, we're going to be back in here Sunday morning uh, in our worship back in the church. And, and we thank the Lord for that. Uh, I've got a lot more to say about that uh, in my message tonight. And uh, so you, you pray and, uh, and, and listen, we want you to be here. And uh, uh, this is the house that the Lord made. And man, this is God's place, God's house. And, and uh, he told us to enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praises upon our lips. And we, we come here to worship God. We come here to praise the Lord. And man, it's been nine weeks uh, since we've been in this building. And we, we are, and listen, it's been way too long. I believe that with all my heart. It has been way too long. And, and I, I know that there, there's still some guidelines. We sent the letter out to you, and you received those letters. There are some guidelines that we're going to still have to go by for a while. And uh, so uh, it's going to be a little bit different for a while. Uh, but listen, uh, we're, we're still able to get back in here and worship the Lord in his house. Amen. And I hope you'll come and be a part of that. And so you pray. Let's pray for all the sickness in our church. We do have a lot of sickness in our church right now. And, and we need to pray. Uh, uh, several of our ladies that are sick in body, going through things and battling cancer. And, and, uh, and, and my wife's got a procedure on Friday that she's going to have to have done. And she had to have that uh, the coronavirus test done yesterday. And when they did, they quarantined her to the house uh, until she has her procedure done. And so uh, you pray for her that the Lord will touch her and everything will be fine uh, uh, with the procedure on Friday. I know Sister Leslie's got one coming up too next week in the same way that she's got to have that coronavirus test done and they'll quarantine her until she has her uh, foot operated on her surgery. And uh, so you pray. They're going to do me the same way. And next Friday, I'll be quarantined in the house uh, until I have my surgery on the following Wednesday. And I'm going to be out for six weeks. And uh, so you pray. I'm glad we're going back in this week to, to church because it's going to be the first time and probably be the last time I'll be back until probably the middle of July. And uh, uh, but that, that's just in body, okay? And if I have to be here, I'll be here, amen? And uh, so you pray. Pray for my surgery. I, I, I do need it. Uh, uh, my doctor, and I'm, I'm going to talk more about Dr. Clayton Thomas here in my message tonight and what he told me. And, uh, and as he tried to encourage me and, uh, and give me a, a, a just, just a, an encouraging word of what he did when I went to see him. But he also said he didn't see how I was even walking on my knee. Uh, it has gotten worse and it needs to serve us. I pray. And, and Brother Andy's at home, y'all. He, he needs our prayers. Sister Mary needs our prayers. And, and we, we went by there uh, Monday evening, uh, no, Sunday on, on our way home. Janet and I went through there on our way home and, and, and saw them and, and prayed with them. And, and he needs our prayers. But they have literally sent him home and told him there's nothing else they can do. He does have hospice and. Uh, they, they've been called in there to the house. So remember them in prayer. Uh, I, I encourage Brother Andy. And, uh, he, he is, his main concern is, is Mary. Uh, he, he started crying on me and said that he was really concerned with what's going to happen with Mary uh, when, that, when something, you know, if he, if he leaves this world. And, and I, I'm told, Brother Andy, and I'll, I'll say this to anybody, the same God, the same God that's going to come and, and take me out of this world one day will be the same God that will be here to help my family. And uh, the same God that's going to come and take Brother Andy home will be the same God that will be here to take care of Sister Mary. Amen? And uh, listen, uh, and we don't have to worry about that. God will take care of us. He'll take care of his children. Amen. And then one day there's going to be a reunion day. Yes. On the other Amen. side. Praise and she'll Lord. get to see him again. And, and, yes. and he'll get to see her again. And that's shouting ground to me, amen? Yes. That's something to shout about because there's going to be a day when all of God's people is going to gather on the other side, amen? And thank God it's in that place that he has prepared for us. And uh, so you pray, you pray for them, and let's pray for those that's not saved, those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Uh, listen, we need to pray this church it was left here for a reason. We were left here to, there's a work to be done, and our work's not, not, not finished. Mm -hmm. The Lord cried out, 
It is finished. He finished his work. But he left the work, his work in our hands, amen. And, and it's not over for the church, amen. So you pray. I'm going to be speaking on those lines here in just a few moments. Uh, so let's remember that God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. And, and I'm glad that he's allowed me to be a part of it, amen. And so you pray. Pray for those that are lost. Pray for those that have gotten out of church. And, and I hope and pray. And we're coming back to church Sunday. Yes. And I hope this hasn't got you away from the Lord. I hope some pandemic, some virus didn't get you away from God. Amen. And what a weak testimony that would be to say that, that, that the coronavirus got me out of church. Amen. It's going to take a lot more than that, friend. And, and I hope you'll be here to worship him and to praise him and to thank him. For the last nine weeks, he has gotten us through this storm. Amen. He has guided us through this thing. And I know it ain't over. But listen, it ain't as bad as it was. Amen. And uh, I believe he's going to get us to the other side. I thought he said he would. And, and so listen, we need we just need to pray. But there's people, there, there's, there's Christian people that have gotten away from the Lord Jesus Christ, got away from the Father, just like the prodigal son. And we need to pray for them tonight that they'll get back where they need to be in their relationship with the Lord. Amen. I, I do believe that, that uh, uh, the avenue of fear uh, played, a, played a, a, a major factor in what's yes. going on in our nation. And, and, and it seems like Satan uh, used that. He, he used that tool, that weapon of fear upon God's people. And, and there's people that are scared to go out. There's people that are still afraid to, to go anywhere. It, it amazes me. Uh, listen, God did not give us that spirit, amen. He, he did not. The Bible says he did not give us the spirit of fear, but that of love and of power and of a sound mind, amen. And we need to use that right. I, I believe he, he gave us a mind to use uh, and, and we're going to do it right. Amen. Uh, we're not just going to come in here and, and it can't be like it was for a while. Uh, but there, there's ways that we can uh, do things and still be able to worship God in safety and, and make sure that you feel safe. That's my main, main concern. If I didn't feel like we were going because the deacons of I have met, we're going to be meeting again on Friday. If I didn't, if I didn't think it was going to be safe to be in this place, in, in this house, I wouldn't do it. I say, you know what, we ain't doing it. But listen, y'all, I've been places. I see what's going on at Walmart. I see what's going on down Lowe's. I see what's going on up here at this convenience store. I see what's going on all around me. And yet the house of God lies empty. Yeah, That's amen. not right. And we need to get back, amen? So I hope you'll be here. Come, pray for those. Let's pray, 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 amen? That's a weapon and a tool that God has given us that Satan cannot take away from us is the power of prayer. And if you'll pray, if you'll pray for our nation, if you'll pray for our services, if you'll pray, I, I believe God will answer our prayers. Amen. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to move uh, in a mighty way across this land and across uh, this nation and across this world. Father God, we love you. God, we want to thank you for the privilege, Lord. What a privilege it is to be back in the sanctuary uh, tonight, Lord. And God, I want to thank you for the, the last nine weeks, Lord, that we've had to do this uh, live streaming and, and the drive-in services. Lord, I, I want to thank you, Lord, that we had the, the equipment and the tools to be able to do that, uh, that the Word of God has still been preached, Lord. Uh, uh, to our people and to the church, Lord. And I thank you for that, God. There's other churches that couldn't do that because they didn't have the equipment and the means to do it. But I thank you, Lord, that we did. I thank you, Lord, that it was used uh, uh, for your glory and your honor, Lord. We, I thank you for Brother Tony and, and Sister Faith and, and Brother David, Lord, uh, because they have been here every service for the last nine weeks. Lord, there's others that came, and I thank you, Lord, that they did. And and, and God, I, I pray come Sunday, Lord, this Sunday, Lord, I, I pray that the house of God will be filled, Lord. Uh, uh, you told us to go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that your house 
would be filled. You, you never intended for the house of God to be empty. That never was your plan or your will. And God, I pray you'll help us. I, I, I know, Lord, that through this, 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 this virus and, and things that have taken place uh, around us, Lord, uh, and God, that we did it, Lord, uh, because we don't want to see anybody get sick. We don't want to see anybody die. Uh, that, that we don't want to see that happen now, God. And Lord, I pray when we come back in on Sunday that you'll put a hedge. God, put a hedge about this place, God, and keep us safe as we come to the house of God to worship you and to praise you. Because I believe that's your will, Lord. I, I believe that that's your, your intended for the church to do. And God, that's what we intend to do. And I pray you'll help us, God. Help your people, Lord. God, there's been a many that have fallen away. The Bible tells us that in the last days there'll be a great falling away. Lord, I pray that they did, it didn't happen through this pandemic. I, I pray that through this coronavirus, Lord, and that it didn't cause people to fall away from God when you have protected them, that they didn't get sick, and they, they could have died from it, God, but you watched over them, Lord. And God, I pray that we'll come into this house, and thank you for that, Lord. God, we've got a lot of sickness in our church. God, there's a lot of people who can't come right now because of their sickness, Lord. And God, I pray you'll touch them. God, I pray you'll help them. Lord, I, I'm glad Jesus makes house calls, Lord. Amen. And God, we pray for those that, that uh, still can't come to church. Lord, that you will help them and touch them and encourage them. Lord, I'm glad we know the great physician. Lord, I'm glad we know the Savior. I'm glad we know the Redeemer. And God, we pray tonight that you would move and do exactly what needs to be done in the home and in the hearts of your people tonight, God. Lord, we pray that you'll help us, God. And in these last days, Lord, you gave us a work. You gave the church a work to do, and that was to take the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to the uttermost parts of this world. And God, I pray you'll help us, uh, Lord, to do our part, to take the gospel and spread it, uh, God, and tell everybody that we, we have a Savior. We serve a God that's alive and well and on the throne and in control. God, that you're still doing great things and miracles, Lord. And you're still in business, God. Lord, I pray you'll help the church in these last days uh, to be what we ought to be and should be and need to be. God, would you move in this service tonight? God, I pray you'll touch Sister Faith, Lord. Bless her singing tonight, God. Touch her voice, Lord. And God, bless, bless the songs tonight, God, that, that it'll be uh, an encouragement to people that are listening, God. And the message tonight, Lord, I pray, God, that the anointing of God will be on it, Lord, that it'll be an encouragement to the people tonight, God, and, and everything that is said and everything that is done in this place tonight, that Jesus Christ will be exalted above all, that all will be drawn nigh unto him. And, Father, we'll thank you, and, God, we will praise you for all that you do in Jesus' name, amen. We will ask Sister Faith to come down and you pray for her, amen. <clears throat> Bless her, Lord. I didn't tell him what we was doing before, you know, we started. So, anyways, I'm thankful tonight. Amen. Bless the Lord. For the Lord, and I'm thankful that he's my rock. That's right. Amen. Y'all pray for us as we do this.
you, Lord.
his presence is, is just made known. And man, you can feel the presence of the Lord. Uh, last night, uh, we did an email here at 6 o'clock. Uh, ever since this happened on Tuesday night, uh, I asked the men to come and, and pray, and some of them have. And uh, we, we were here last night, Brother David and I. And uh, I got here a little early, and I sat in here, and I said, Lord, I, I sure do miss being in this place. There's no other place I would rather be than be yes. in the house of the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. God saved me 38 years ago this September. And when I got saved on Sunday night, 1982, uh, the Lord saved me and he, he put church in me. Uh, when, when I got saved that Sunday night, I couldn't wait to get back. And it seemed like it was eternity between Sunday and Wednesday. Uh, after the Lord has saved me, and uh, I, I never, nobody's ever had to beg me to come to church, amen. Uh, it's just God put something inside me when he saved me. And that's the, the desire, the, the desire to yeah. be in yeah. the house of the Lord, amen. amen. And, and I hope you still have that desire for me. Yes. I, I hope you haven't lost it. And if you have, you, you, you can, you can get it back, amen. And we need that desire to be in the house of the Lord. Now, I didn't ask her to sing that song. I didn't know she was going to sing that song. But I want to read my scripture, and then you'll know why. And I about come unmoved when, when she sung that first song. Uh, the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he came unto the, 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 the coast of Caesarea, and, uh, and, and as the disciples, let me put this on there, but then they don't, is it on them? That was it. And uh, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And he said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build what? My church. My church. And, and, and here's what he said. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whosoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples, that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Father God, we want to thank you once again for the privilege that we have, Lord, the honor that we have to call on your name one more time today, God. Uh, Lord, this has been a good day. Uh, Lord, uh, it, it's been a day, God, uh, I thank you that you were with us that you got us through it, and you brought us here to the house of God tonight, Lord, uh, that we can stand in the sanctuary of the house of the Lord and worship you and praise you. Uh, Lord, I, I thank you, God, that come Sunday, uh, Lord, the doors of the church are going to be open, not just to a few, uh, Lord, but to whosoever will let him come uh, and drink of the water of life freely, Lord. I am glad church uh, uh, tonight God will be open Father and God we pray that you would move in demonstration and in power tonight
my God. Uh, Lord, I pray that your will would be done in the hearts and lives uh, of men and women, boys and girls. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, uh, Lord, that your people are seeking, uh, uh, God, your will for their hearts and their lives and their homes and their families, God. Uh, Lord, I ask you tonight to touch me, Lord. Uh, God, I pray for that unction, that anointing from on high, realizing, God, I can't do anything without you, Lord. God, I need your help here tonight. God, would you move? God, would you speak to hearts tonight? God, Lord, would you challenge the church tonight? God, would you help us, Lord, to be all that we can be and need to be and should be in these last days? God, would you speak now, God, and save those that are lost? Reclaim that backslider, Lord. God, I know it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, Lord. God, it never was your intentions for man to die and go to hell. God, we pray for those that do not know you tonight to free pardon of sin. God, may the Holy Spirit of God move and, Lord, speak to hearts and save souls tonight, God. Uh, Lord, set the captive free tonight, Lord. God, have your way. Lord, Father, we'll certainly thank you and God will praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. Uh, I want to say something as we preach tonight from this chapter. That the Lord, the, the Lord in his ministry while he was here on earth only mentioned the church twice. He only mentioned the church, the word, twice. And they're both found in the book of Matthew. And here in Matthew chapter 16, we find his most extensive statement about the church. And that statement is known throughout the church world. Everybody has heard it. Most preachers have preached on it. We've all talked about it. What was said in, 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 in verse 18 where the Bible says, uh, I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I, I'm glad tonight that, listen, I, I know we, we've been in a it seems like a storm for the last nine weeks. It seems like the church uh, uh, has been under attack. Uh, uh, can I say this? Our churches have been shut down uh, for nine weeks now. The doors have been closed to the house of God for the first time in history. For the first time in our nation, Amen. this has ever happened. Uh, can I say, listen, the church was... And I, I know what they have said, amen. Our leaders, Brother Tony, have told us for the last nine weeks that the church is non essential. That's a lie. Amen. Let me go ahead and say that again. That's a lie. Amen. Yeah, amen. They have told us, uh, 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 the leaders of this nation, e even the governor of North Carolina, Roy Cooper, has, they have told us, uh, amen, that the church is not essential. That, 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 that's a lie from hell. Amen. Listen, if there's one building, if there's one place that needs to be open and should have been open is the house of God. Yeah, I amen. remember as a little child in this nation, as a little boy, I remember the church. I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't taken to church. But I always remember that the doors of the church were open and people could come in and pray anytime they want. They never were locked. They never were. There was a time in this nation they didn't even lock the door to the church. People could come and go and pray and seek God when they wanted to. But now they tell us, amen, that the church, they have considered it non-essential. I, I want to say something about the house of God. It's essential. Yeah. It's essential. What does the word mean? I'm going to preach on that Sunday. 
when we come back in here, I've got a message about this I'm going to preach. I ain't preaching it tonight. I've got something else. But I'm going to say this. Essential simply means absolutely necessary, yeah. indispensable. That's yeah. the church, amen. Yes. That is the house of God. On March the 21st of, of this year, our governor, Mr. Roy Cooper, publicly declared churches and places of worship non-essential. That was nine weeks ago. That was nine, over two months, over two months as the state slowly opens back up now. I think we're going into phase two this weekend. Yes, sir. Uh, and and the, the, they have slowly, our leaders have said they're going to slowly open things back up. I was at my doctor's office last week. And uh, Clayton, Mr. Clayton Thomas, my doctor, who's going to do my surgery on my knee, we were talking and I asked him, how long could it, would it be before I could come and preach and, and stand and, and be able to do that? And he, he said, I, I can't answer that. That's up to the individual that determines you. And he said, I can tell you for a month, you're not going to feel like it. You're not going to be able to. I can't even drive for four weeks. And he said, the rest will be up to you. We'll see. And uh, we got to talk about church. And he said, when y'all going back in? I said, Labor Day weekend. He said that his pastor and several other pastors from, from North Carolina were going to Raleigh with, with, with uh, they took a lawsuit against our governor to open our churches back up. Yeah. And, and it's time. He said it, it is time. There, there's ways and things that we can do to practice safety, and we know that. And, and even, even the doctors agree that it's time that we come back to the church and worship yes, God. Amen. And, and I, man, I, I, I about fell out, y'all. And I, I said, thank you for talking to me and talking with me, amen. And, and uh, as our state slowly opens back up, I thought about this all, all day long. I, I've been thinking, you, you can go to tennis courts, you, you can go to golf courses, but you can't go to church. Have you thought about that? Yeah. You, you can now take your child to a public playground. You can take them fishing. My, my, my son-in-law has taken my grandchildren hiking, bike riding, but you still can't take them to church. Yeah. You, you can take your daughter to an abortion clinic but you weren't able to bring it to the house of God. Yeah. You, you can take your son to the liquor store. Yeah. But you couldn't bring him to the house of God. Yeah. Something ain't right, y'all. Something's been wrong, amen. Then this whole thing ain't been right. Uh, all the activities, uh, amen, hiking and bike riding and fishing and boating and these things were considered essential. Remember what, what I said, uh, absolutely necessary, indispensable. They said those things are necessary for you. Let me tell you what's necessary for me. Yeah. The church, yeah. the house of God yeah. is necessary. Amen. Yeah. Always has been and always will be the church of the living God. Amen. I, I want to say this, and I don't make no apology about it tonight, and I will not back up and make one. The church is not non-essential. The church, Mr. Cooper, and anybody else that wants to know, the church of Christ is essential. Amen. I, I, I would like for them to know, listen, the church is going to roll on. Now I want to preach on that thought just for a moment. The church is going to roll on with us or without us. The church of the living God is going to go on. You can't stop it. I know. I know Satan's probably had a heyday. I, I know, amen, all the demons in hell that they thought has been shut down and they locked the doors down and ain't nobody going. Listen, we've had more church 
church in the last nine weeks. I hope you have. I know we have. Amen. Not maybe not in this building, but they can't stop the church. Amen. Amen. That's right. They can't stop it. They can't stop it. Amen. From this verse, from this verse of scripture, four things that we see about the church. And I'm preaching on the thought, just for a moment, I'm going to go home. The church will roll on. Mm -hmm. Why will the church continue to go on? Why will the church roll on? And they've tried. And they ain't been the first one, by the way. It, it's, they, they've tried to stop the church. They, they've tried to put out Christianity for thousands of years. But you can't stop it. Hey, man, you, you can't. Why? Why would the church roll on? Because in this verses that, that Jesus told Peter, amen, number one, we see the church's testimony. Amen. I, we see the testimony. Here, here's what the Bible says. That he, the Lord asked them when, when they were in, 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 in Philippi, he asked his disciples a question. Who do men say that I the son of man am. And they said, well, some people say that, God, that you're John the Baptist. But we know that ain't true. Some people say you're Elijah. We know that ain't true. He said, some people say you're Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But he said unto them, whom say ye that I am? Here's the testimony of the church. Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That has always been and always will be the testimony of the church. Amen. Yes. That we know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus yes. Christ is the only begotten Son of God. Yes. And you can't stop that. Amen. He's always been, always been. testimony of the church that we let this world know that we serve a God, amen. Uh, that we serve a Savior. He was born in a manger in Bethlehem of a virgin, amen. The Bible tells us we know the story, amen. We, and, and we know the testimony that we carry with us that Jesus, Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father. Peter said, Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And they ain't no other. We're not looking for another. We have a Savior. We know who He is. He's Jesus, amen. And the church carries that testimony even to this day. When Peter made that statement, Thousands of years ago, amen, and we still carry on that statement tonight that we know that he is the son of the living God, amen. The church rolls on because of our testimony of who Jesus is. But not only that, not only that, we see the church rolls on because of the foundation of the church. We see the church's testimony but we also roll on, hey man, and they can't stop the church because of the foundation. Because of the church's foundation. Here's what it says. Upon this rock, Jesus said, Peter, who, who do they say that I am? And they answered him and started saying, who man began to say that he was? Elijah. Jeremiah, one of the other prophets, the Bible says, but Peter answered and said, Thou art the Son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjonas, for, for flesh, here it is, and blood hath not revealed this unto you. But my Father, which is in heaven, and I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, yeah. he wasn't talking about Peter. We're, that ain't the foundation of the church. 
If Peter was the foundation of the church, the church would have crumbled a long time ago. Amen. Because, listen, you can't build God's church on, upon man. It was built upon the rock. It was built upon Christ, the solid rock. I'm glad we're standing on a sure, solid foundation. The Lord Jesus Christ is our foundation. They can shake it all they want to. Yeah. They can round it all they want to. But the foundation will never give way. The foundation will never crack because we are standing solid upon yeah. the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Yes. That's our foundation. And it is sure. It is steadfast. Amen. It always will be. Yes. The church will roll on with us or without us. Yes. Amen. The church is always going to be here. Why? Because it's standing on a solid foundation. The Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, amen, is our foundation. All other foundations are fail. All other foundations are fail. We're, the church was not built upon our government. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Somebody needs telling that. Yeah, say it again. Amen. Yes, amen. Somebody, somebody needs to, to write the White House. Yes. Some, somebody needs to write our congressmen. Somebody needs to write our senators and, 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 and our governors and let them know that this house, the church of God, was not built upon them. Mm -hmm. We're not standing on that kind of a foundation because that kind of foundation will crumble. It'll crack. It'll go down. Hey, man, no, that's not what Jesus said. He said, Peter, I want you to know this day that the, the church, he said the church, uh, upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. It's not their church. It's his church. Amen. Amen. We belong to him, not them. And yeah. they Amen. can't tell us yes. when to worship him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Or how to worship yes. him. Yes. Amen. That's why the door yes. to the church yes. should have never been closed. They don't have the authority yes. to tell us yes. that we can't worship God in his house. Yes. He established it. He built it upon himself and said that we That's why we're coming back in the church. Hey, man, we're coming back. Why? Because he built it upon himself. A sure, solid foundation that will never crumble or give way. And he gave us the authority. And then he gave us the power to come and worship him. Hey, man, listen. We don't have to be afraid, y'all. I'm afraid that they took this fear factor. I'm afraid they took this, 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 this fear and, and, and they ran with it. And man, I, I, I know, listen, I'm like everybody else. At, in the beginning, we, 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 we thought it was best. The virus, they said, was worse. The, 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 the worst thing that's ever come, they were telling us this virus is so contagious, this virus it's going to kill millions, they said, before it's over and done with. Millions of people going to die in the United States. And that fear, yeah. that fear ran through this nation. Yeah. But you listen to me, it didn't just run through this nation, it ran through this church. And we let that fear cause us to lock those doors, worship God in a, in a parking lot, when he had a house that he built for us. And I think it's time that we let the world know the church is going to roll on. Yeah. Hey man, you can't stop it. Hey man, you can't, you can't stop the church. Why? Because we've got a testimony. Hey man, that, that our Savior, hey man, we, we know who Jesus Christ is. He's the Son of the living God and we are built on a solid foundation that rock. He is the rock. He's my rock. He's your rock. He's yes. the rock of amen. ages. Amen. Yes. He's amen. the solid yes. rock. Yes. Amen. And upon this rock yes. Praise the Lord. I'm going to build my church he said. Yes. But he didn't he didn't finish. He didn't end that there. He didn't end that statement there. He didn't end that, that, that phrase there. He went on to tell Peter that upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Amen. And the church is going to roll on. Why? Because not only of the foundation,
confirmation, not only of the testimony, but of the assurance that we have. Because here's what he said. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Yeah. He said all the gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen. They tried. They Listen, this ain't going to be the last time. It wasn't the first time. And they'll do it. The devil will do everything he can to, to see or try to, to shut down the church. This, this, this weapon, this powerhouse, this tool that God has, the church. The church that he left here to carry on his work. That he left here, amen, to do what he, he wanted to be done, which is to spread the gospel of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and let the world know there's hope and there's help. And you can be saved and you don't have to die and go to hell. Amen. You can go to heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ if you put your faith and trust in him and accept what he did at Calvary. Friend, you can be saved. Amen. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against that. Amen. They tried. They tried. They tried. I do believe that Satan has people in his army that are against the church. Yeah. Yeah. They're not for the church. They've never been for the church. They'll do everything they can to keep you and I from having church. Amen. But listen, we've got power. We've got greater is he that is in me yes, than he God. that is in yes. this world. And God gave us great power yes. to rise up and be the church, amen, amen, that he intended for us to be. And the church has the assurance, amen, of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He said this. He said he made this statement. He made this statement about the church. Only one or two times that he mentions church. And he says this about the church. Peter, upon this rock, upon myself, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know what hell is? The land of the lost. Yeah. The land of the dead. The place of the dead. Listen, but, but the Lord... The Bible says that, that when they put him in that, that, that tomb, when, when he gave his life at Calvary, they put him in a bar tomb, and he was in there for three days, but he wasn't in that tomb for three days. The Bible says that he went to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. He went down to the land of the laws. He went down to, down to the land of the dead, and he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Amen. And he came out victoriously. He arose on the third day carrying those keys. And you know what he did? He gave those keys. He said, I will give up to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Now the church has the power. Amen. We carry that power over death, hell, and the grave. Amen. That you and I, amen, have the assurance that God walks with us. God is with us. If God be for us, then who can be against us? We don't have to fear man. We don't have to fear man. God is greater. God is bigger. He's my God tonight. Amen. And he has given us the assurance that all the gates of hell of the land of the lost and the dead cannot prevail against the church. Amen. Yes. The church will go on. The church will go on. With you, here it is, yes. or without you. Yes. The church will roll on. Yes. We have that assurance, amen. We're, we're, we're not meant to quit. We were never meant to stop. He gave us a work to do, and our work's not done. It ain't finished, y'all. And then it's time that we get back to doing what God called us to do in the church. Amen. 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 I'm afraid that many, I'm afraid that many have already given up. I, I, I wonder what foundation they were really on. What, what foundation were you standing on? Who, who, who did you consider that Jesus was? The Son of the living God, the Savior of the world, the Redeemer of all mankind. He's my master. 
He's my Lord. He's my King. He's my everything. Yes, amen. And it's time, yes. amen, that we come back and worship Him and praise Him because He gave us the assurance in His Word that we are standing on a solid foundation, the rock, and all that hell can throw at us will not prevail. This coronavirus will not prevail. Yeah. It will come to an end. Amen. Can I say this lastly? We see that the church will roll on, not only because of the testimony, not, not only because of the assurance that we have, not, not only be, be, because uh, uh, not only the assurance and, and, and the testimony and, and the foundation, but the church is going to roll. Watch this, because of the authority. Because of the authority, y'all. The church will roll on because of who said it. The church will roll on that's what Jesus meant when he said, the gates of hell shall not. That, that simply means cannot. Cannot prevail against it. And, and I, I'm going to say something, ladies and gentlemen, to you that are listening to, to the service tonight. Can, can I say this? The church will roll on. Yes. The church will Amen. continue to go on. That, that is the assurance of the church tonight. We are here for a little while. Yeah. Stay with me now because I thought about this today. We, we're only here, Brother David, for a little while and then we're gone. But I got news for you. The church still be here. Yeah. The church is still going to go on. The church is going to go on Till Jesus comes and gets the church. Yeah. I thought about the former pastor, Brother Billy Allen. 34 of his years of his life dedicated to this building, to this church, to his people. 34 years of ministry. And he's gone on to be with the Lord. But yet the church Still here. rolls on. Yes. I, I, I thought about Preacher Howard today. And, 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 and my mentor, I love that man. He, he, was, he was more than a brother to me. He helped me in so many ways. And, and, and I, I know what he would say in the midst of this, this virus. He would say the church must go on. He's not here. But the church will go on. If the Lord tarries, if the Lord tarries his coming, then all of us could be gone one day. But the church is still going to roll on. It, because it does not, the church does not, and, and I hope, if you don't get anything, I hope you get this. The church of Jesus Christ does not depend on mortal men. We simply depend and here's what he said about his church. Upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to build my church. Yes. And my church, I want you to know, Peter, that all the gates of hell, everything that the land of the lost and the land of the dead has cannot stop my church. Yeah. That's what he said. It does not depend on man. It is built on the word and the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, who is that one that was dead and is now alive and according to Revelation is alive forevermore? Amen. And he holds those keys to death, hell, and the grave in his hands. He's alive. That's our assurance that the church will roll on. Yeah. Our job is to do our part. 
Our job is to do what we can. I don't want to see the church stop. I don't want to be the reason for it too. Why? Because it can't. It can't. It can't, y'all. It's always been here. Yes. It's always been here. Yes, sir. It's always going to be here. I don't care how much they try to change our nation. I don't care how much they try to change us. The church of the living God is always going to be here until Jesus comes and takes the church out of here. They can't stop it. And that means that we can come in here and worship God in truth and in spirit and not out of fear. We don't have to be afraid. Because we have a God that has promised yeah. to be with us. And he established his church. He built it. He built it upon himself. Yeah. And told us that nothing hell has can stop us. So let's don't let it happen. Let's keep it rolling on. Let's amen. come sing. Yes, amen. Let's worship God. Yes, amen. Let's Praise let this God. world know and yeah. the devil know and the devil's crowd know we ain't scared. Yeah, amen. We, we ain't scared Yeah, amen. We got a God yes. that's alive. Yes. Amen. amen. And he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, mm -hmm. amen. I'll be back. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. He'll be here Sunday. Amen. He'll be here Sunday. Absolutely. I hope you'll be here, amen, yes, as we come and worship the Lord and the church rules on. Yeah. Father God, we want to thank you for your word tonight. God, we pray you'll help us in these last days. Lord, I, I do believe that the devil is doing everything he can, Lord, to stop the church. To stop the church, Lord. But he can't. God, Lord, you said, you told your disciples, you told those men that you built the church upon yourself. That we are, we are established on the rock, the solid foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that all that hell has cannot and will not prevail against us. God, I pray you'll help us to carry on, help us to stand. Paul said, when we've done all we can do to stand, just stand. And God, it is time for the church to rise up. It is time for the church to stand up. It is time for God's people to get back in that place that you told us we needed to be. The sanctuary, the tabernacle, the house of the living God. That we come in here with thanksgiving and praises upon our lips and shout and say, Thank you, Lord, that we're still going on and we're still going strong. And God, we pray for those that have fallen away. God, we pray for those that have faltered along the way. God, that you'll help them to get back up and get back in. Now is the time to get out. Now is the time. Now it is time and high time that we wake out of sleep and we get back to doing what you have called us to do as the church. God, would you move? God, would you move out here at West Fifth Avenue, Fremont Baptist Church? God, would you help us to be Here's what the Lord said about our Father's business. God, would you help us to get back doing your business when they have shut down a lot of things in this nation. And they called it non-essentials. And they were, they were businesses, Lord. And if they don't open up soon, God, there, there's going to be people. Lord, they're going to lose everything they got if they don't open this thing back up. Lord, the church, the church should have never been one of those listed as non-essential. If there's one place, if there's one place that man needs, if there's one place upon this earth that man needs to be opened, to have opened, considered absolutely necessary, is the church. It's the church. It's that place that house of worship where we can come and seek your face. Where man can come and worship you. That's this place, Lord. 
God, I thank you for being with us in the parking lot. I thank you, Lord, that you've been with us out there in the fellowship building. But there ain't no place like this yes, place. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, to come this Sunday. God's people will be happy with us. And give God praise one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And God, we ask you, Lord, to save those that are lost. Those that do not know you like we know you. Those that do not have a relationship with you like we do. God, would you move upon that person and save that precious soul. Until Sunday, watch over us, help us, and use us for your glory and your honor. And we'll thank you and God will praise you in Jesus' name.